Okay. And last week, in doing this, where we look, we defined, we introduced surgery on the surface. Returning to surgery, so surgery, a surgery like a surgery, like a doctor performs surgery on you. So. so let's let's come back to this, and we can re recall these definitions as as we come across them. So let's recall the surgery. We had the setup was we had the F. define what's called surgery on along C or E. So we define C. 
three. So what that means is we've got a circle on the surface, okay. and we just thicken up the circle a little bit. We, we cut out the annulus. So it's if, here's our annulus, we cut it out. We have if, well, we write if back, backslash A, and then we go in. discs two discs where the discs with each disc disc it's right two discs which in the picture, we have this curve C, now one thing I neglected to say is this F is an orbital surface in three dimensional space, so the surface is in three dimensional space, so in our, in our world, the circle is in also in three dimensional space, and so the circle bounds a disk the circle bounds a disk in three dimensional space and each of these uh, this D and D prime are copies of this disk where each disk is a parallel copy of a disk in three-dimensional space space bound by C so in the picture all that means is so we first delete the annulus okay. and then you see you've got these two circles here and here so all we do is we plug in a disk here we plug in a disk here genus of this surface. What is the genus of this surface? Количество ручек. 
So one, two, okay, just, just, just how many holes? You just, all right, so, so when you have a torus, one hole. Genus, just one. Okay, two holes. Um, and we've gone to a surface with genus. What is the genus of this surface? One. Okay, so we've got the genus. Right, so but this is called, this is what I call F C. Okay? So you start with the surface, have a circle on the surface, thicken up the circle, cut it out, and then glue in discs to the two new boundary components. Okay? And in this picture, this picture is what we call case one. This is called, well, we label case one, in which case C here. C is non-separated on F. If we delete C from F, then we get the result is still connected. Okay. C is non-separating. Case two is if the curve is separated. Would anyone like to draw on my surface a separating curve? So C is separated. Would anyone like to quickly draw a circle on the surface so that when you cut it out, the surface becomes disconnected? We can go between this two. Do you mean like here? Yes. Okay, good. That would be one. And just, by the way, what if I had it, would this be separating? This could? What do you think? This is, so think of a torus. What if you cut out that curve? Она разрезает или нет? Let's see, is this, is this point нет, here? Конечно. Можете с другой стороны подойти. Let's have a look. So this point here, can I connect this point to this point without touching this curve? I could, so it would be non-separate. It would be non-separate. Okay. On the other hand, I could draw a circle like this, and that would be separated. Когда разрезает, когда не разрезает поверхность на компоненты. It, it would because I this point here and this point here I can't get from this point to this point without going across the surface. Разрезает на две компоненты. Сепаратистское слово, знаете? Я уже понимаю. Которые пытаются отделить что-то. Я понимаю, что он смысл сейчас. So this would be separated, this would be separated. Okay, but this is a good example. So here C is separating, so if we did the surgery, along it, we first thicken it up, and we delete. Separate is to разделять на части. Сепаратисты, те, которые пытаются делить. And then we glue in discs along into the along the two. Uh, okay, so when we do the surgery, we could either get two components or the same component with genus one less. So that's the level we wrote down. Last one. The last time we observed we observed the only characteristic of F C which 
So this is if minus a e d e because these are because the annulus and the uh, surface are meet along circles and the discs and the surface meet along circles. We saw that the Euler characteristic is additive. Do you remember this? If two surfaces so if A and B surfaces intersecting are in circles. But when it comes to all the union, it's the sum of the workers. So I think Qualia showed us this last time. So, uh, so coming back to our formula, the one characteristic of the result of surgery is given by the Euler characteristic of F minus the Euler characteristic of an annulus and what's the Euler characteristic of an annulus? Cylinder. How would you work out the Euler characteristic of a cylinder? How would you work out the Euler characteristic of a cylinder? Take the square and put it on Максим, помните ли вы, что бывает, когда берешь прямоугольник и склеиваешь у него противоположные стороны? Сколько там будет ребер? Очевидно, три. Сколько там будет грани? Одна. Сколько вершин? Две. Осталось быстро посчитать. How many edges? Edges. Three. Three. How many faces? One face. So when you when you take the number of vertices minus the number of edges plus the number of faces, what number do you get? Number three, already. Huh? Ну говорите, говорите. Yeah. So the Euler case of an is zero. And the Euler case of a disc. The Euler case is the most common quadrat. Вершин 4, ребер 4, грани 1. So the Euler case of the surgery is the Euler case of the surface. And then it doesn't depend on which case we have. That was just our formula. Maybe I should have kept these pictures. Okay, and so as a crawler of that, we can write down what the genus is. So, um, uh, so the genus is, let's see, in case one, if when you see is connected, so in the case that C is uh, not separated. Non-separating. I can't remember if we proved this or not. The only characteristic of the result of surgery 
We just saw a moment ago, in the, in the picture I erased, what happened to the genus of the surface when we did the surgery? It dropped by one. So. So given that we know the form of the oil crab stick, would anyone like to remind us of the proof of this? Помните ли вы связь между родом и эйлеровой характеристикой? Как вы помните? Эйлеровая характеристика это 2 минус 2 g. Ну, или вы знаете, что произошло с эйлеровой характеристикой? Вон у вас формула написана на правой доске. Можете ли вы понять, что происходит с числом g, если у вас эйлеровая характеристика увеличилась на 2? Что надо сделать с числом g? Если у вас число 2 минус 2, чтобы 2 минус 2 же уменьшилось на 2. Вот это вот, увеличилось на 2. Вот, вот это ему скажите. With say B boundary component boundary soup, then we define its genus. genus of the closed surface uh, obtained by closing up uh, all the boundary components. And the genus of A is defined to be the genus of A hat, where A hat is the surface So, so what this means is that, so you guys had told me earlier that the genus of this surface is one, and so all I'm just reminding you here is that the genus of, so this surface is closed. Can you guys remind me what does it mean? What does it mean for surface to be closed? Что такое поверхность замка? Okay. Есть границы. I only ask so sorry, we are all on the same page. So closed means it doesn't have any boundary. Okay, so can someone give me an example of a closed surface? Sphere. Sphere. Good. Another one? Klein bottle. Good. Okay. And now, is a, is a Mobius strip a closed surface? No. Is a projective plane a closed surface? And is an annual as a closed surface. Okay, good. So, okay. Okay, so the genus of this closed surface is one, and all I was reminding you here is that the genus of this surface, if I take a torus and I delete a disk from it, Okay, so I get a surface with a boundary circle. And all I'm saying here is, by definition, this is the genus of We 
define the genus of such a surface is we glue in the discs to get something that's closed. Okay. And the genus of this is, is one. So that's, that's what I was saying. Okay, now, okay, so let's come back to this. So the genus of A, A is the genus of A hat. Okay, so now what I'd like you to remind me is A hat, so, so let's say here is A, and here is A hat. You have some surface with boundary. And you glue in discs to close it up, and why I just called it A hat. Okay. Now, can you guys remind me if I have a closed surface, what is the relationship between its genus and its order characteristic? Well, let's see. So, firstly, order characteristic A hat. If it's orientable, do you remember it's. 2 minus 2 g. So, so the genus of a hat is 2 minus oligoster. Now the order goes to A hat, so A hat, A hat, uh, excuse me, A hat, we get A hat by looking at A, and we glue in a disc for each boundary component. So if we had, if we had B boundary components, one, two, three, four, B boundary circles, How does the Euler characteristic change when we glue in a disc to get up here? We need to attach a disc. You attach a disc along a circle. What did we just say before? If we have two surfaces that intersect along circles, then the Euler characteristic of gluing the two together along that circle is the same as the order characteristic of one plus the order characteristic of the other. Okay. So now what is the order characteristic of the disc? One. one. So when I glue in a circle, a, a, a disc along a circle, I increase the order characteristic by one. Okay. So if there are B such circles, then the order characteristic of A hat. is the Euler characteristic of A plus B, exactly. So the genus of A is 2 minus the Euler characteristic of A minus B over 2. Okay, so that's so where A has B boundary components. Okay, so let's come back to... Okie dokie, so... In the non-separating case, if... if F has... Boundaries components. And we do the surgery in case one. How many boundary components does the resulting surface have? So remember in the in the first case? Okay, so here so this is a, a good point, uh, a good uh, thing to emphasize. When we do the surgery, so when we do the surgery, as I said, the circle is in the interior, 
That means it's not, it's away from the boundary. Okay? So it's always away from the boundary. So let me let me, let me make the synthesis. Surgery, as we defined it, does not change the boundary. This is an important point. And, and why is that? Because when we did our surgery, say our surface is boundary. Maybe, maybe it's as hollow as it would. And maybe this is here. So maybe it has a boundary here and a boundary here. Okay. By definition of the surgery, the circle C is always interior. So by that I mean it's not, it doesn't touch the boundary. Okay, so in the example here we had C. Okay, so when we cut out C, an annual neighborhood of C, and we glue in discs, we haven't changed the boundary. See that? So the surgery happens away from the boundary, so that's important. Um, it's going to be important later when we're interested in surgery and uh, cipher surfaces. So this is this is a bit, a bit too much. So, so the surgery does not change the boundary. So if C also has B boundary surface. Circles. So therefore, if we want to compute the genus of Fc and we apply that formula, so by a formula, it's 2 minus the Euler characteristic of Fc minus B of 2. Okay. Now the Euler characteristic of Fc. What is the relationship between the Euler characteristic of Fc and Euler characteristic of F? We wrote it down before. When we did the surgery, how did the Euler characteristic change? Remember, you remove an annulus, Euler characteristic is 0, and then you add two discs, each Euler characteristic 1. Changed by two, so this is all the of f plus two. So genus of f c is the is two minus. So, so I here I just wrote it a bit differently just because I wanted to pull out genus of F. So that's our formula for one. In the case two, C is separated. See, so when we do this now, uh, when we do the surgery,
So this is case two where we have C is separating two components, Fc, and I just label them F1 and F2. From this picture, can we conjecture a formula with the genus of F in terms of the genus of F1 and F2? So we start with the genus, genus 2, and we get two pieces. So what, what, what do you conjecture the formula to be? Genus of F would be F1 plus the genus of F2. Okay, so now what I'd like you guys to do is use this. So let me just remind you that we have this formula. So what I'd like you to do is see if you could use this formula to prove this identity. So to start you off, you let, let B be the let's start off. Let B be the number of boundary circles of F. Okay, so let's prove this formula. Circle each piece has. Firstly, if we start off with B boundary circles and we do the surgery, how many boundary circles must we have in the end? In total? B. So remember that surgery doesn't change the boundary. Okay. So we start off with B boundary circles we're going to end up with B boundary circles. Okay. But now, for example, in this picture, they're just going to end up on different components. Okay. So now, if B1 is the number of boundary circles of the first one, and B2 is the number of boundary circles of the second one, what is the relationship between B and B1 and B2? Exactly. So then, So now, if we've given this, do you think you guys could, if I give you a couple of seconds, minutes, you could prove this identity? We've got it now using this formula. Want to give it a shot? Uh, would you like to give it a try? Зачерпните просто двойки. 
И зачеркните B, B1, B2. Зачеркивайте уже. И двойки. По, по одной двойке все-таки уберите. Ну, осталось объяснить, почему. Почему это так? Надо посмотреть, что происходит при склеивании. Ведь они фактически склеиваются кругом. Что происходит с... Представьте себе, что не круг для понятности, пусть они по квадрату склеиваются. С одной стороны был квадрат, с другой стороны квадрат. Что тогда происходит с количеством ребер? Это не форма, ведь просто посмотреть. Вот были грани. Характеристики не складываются. Складываются, если прикладывать по окружности. Смотрите, вычтем два диска. Вот, вот, вот. Каждый диск это минус один, а потом сложим по окружности, получится как раз то, что. Именно. Теперь то же самое по английски ему. Давайте. Максим. We can cut out two discs from F1 and from F2. Firstly, this this is what's wrong with words. Okay. Um, 
All right, great. So now we've got the formula for the well, uh, the genus of surgery. Either either we reduce, either we either we drop the genus by one in case one, or we split up the genus. Um, the genus splits between the two pieces. So now, what, now what was the, the point of this? The, the the point was to prove our decomposition theorem. So of course, and so we call a proof of the existence of the prime decomposition was the uh, theorem we were proving. We're proving additivity of the genus. Not which is the other case to go to the next sum of knots. Is the other case to assume that she's going to genus of it? Uh, the mix of knots is a genus of y plus a genus of k2 where so just in case you weren't here when we define these let's just remind ourselves so one the genus of a knot is defined to be the minimal genus And the other piece in this other definition we've got in this formula is the connect sum of knots. K1, K2 means if we have two. Two oriented knots. Triple on the figure eight, for example. So we have two knots, K2 oriented. Then the connect sum of these knots means you delete a point from each. Delete a point from each, and you connect the two strings so that the orientations are consistent. This is the connect sum of, of knots. And our formula saying gave us a formula for the genus of. of. Okay, so we're proving this formula. So far, we've proved, and Quilio reminded of us of the proof last time. Last time we proved that K1 is less than equal to K1 minus K2. And now we're proving that we just check the right way around. 
and now we're proving the other direction. So we, we, I think on the first day we looked at this, we just started, so let's, let's remind ourselves. Okay, so firstly we need to If be a minimal ciphered surface for the connect sum. Ребята, вот такой штучки D круглая обозначают границу множества. Это стандартное обозначение. Понятно, да? Когда перед множеством ставят такой вот э, значок D, такой вот не прямой, а э, курсивная, то это называется граница. It's a it's a ciphered surface so that its genus is the genus of the knob. Okay, so we can't find a, a surface a ciphered surface for k uh, the k sum of the small genus. Okay, so and now the and the knick sum when we define the knick sum by definition there is a there is this two sphere. There's a two sphere, it's called S. When we form a connect sum, there's always a two sphere which intersects the knot in two points. In two points. And And uh, if we connect those two points on the two sphere by an arc, arc, and if we connect the two points along K1, then we recover our first knot K1. And if we connect the two points by this arc and along this other piece of the knot, then we get K2. Okay. So when we form the connect sum, we always have a two sphere intersecting the knot in precisely two points. Okay. And this divides the knot into two pieces. One piece is obtained by connecting the two points on the inside and an arc, and one is on the outside. Okay, so the S, what is this connect sum? The S, we get two sphere. Separating, uh, intersecting. Use 
some form here. So whenever we have a kinetic sum, it always means by definition we have such a two sphere. Let me keep this picture to give you an idea of what's happening. So, so far, so far we have, uh, we've let F be a cyclic surface for our kinetic sum. Okay, so in the case of a triple, In this case, so this is F. Okay. Notice in this picture, if the cyclic surface intersects the two sphere in just this arc. Okay. So now, do you see that if I take this F and I split up the, I can split up the cyclic surface into this piece and into this piece on the other side of the arc. Okay, so if, if F intersect S is a single arc, well actually you say this, Here we've got a single arc. Okay. In general, if I have a two sphere and I have a surface with boundary, remember what we said about how could they intersect? If you have a a surface with boundary and you have a two sphere, how could they intersect? Как пересекаются двумерные поверхности? В принципе, они по какой? Почему пересекаются? В принципе, ну да, две сферы они пересекаются. Почему? По окружности. Ну а здесь что будет? Здесь на сфере будут такие линии пересечения с этой поверхностью. То есть, смотрите, у вас есть граница, это наш узел, и у нас есть какая-то хитрая поверхность. И она как-то пересекается со сферой. Вот есть одно пересечение, вот это душка. If I have a surface that intersects this surface and the point, what must this look like? Matthew, you've got a piece of paper, two pieces of paper. Касание возможно? Могут в одной точке две поверхности? Two surfaces, and they intersect at a single point. How must it look like? It must look like a... Well, paper's not very good. It has to look like like that, right? I've got a finger poking down to it. Okay. But now, if that was such a case, then I could just pull my finger up a little bit, and that no longer intersect. Now, moreover, 
if these services, services hit boundary, could this point be on the in boundary of my other surface B? I've got a finger. Ну, могу это быть до границы? So, Нет, не могу, потому что мы знаем, как граница пересекается. Граница пересекается только по двум точкам. Then this point is is not on the boundary, so this point is not on the boundary. So uh, I could modify my surface, the interior of my surface, so that I don't get intersect. Okay. How else could the surfaces intersect? How could these guys intersect? They could poke all the way through. case, what does the intersection look like? What does this intersection look like? It's the поверхность как протекает сферу, что тогда на сфере появится? Именно. Curve. Closed curve. Some of the curve. Closed curve, a circle. They could intersect on circles. If his boundary, let me draw this picture a little bit bigger. So I must say this if. picture I have an intersection along an arc. So here's my two sphere and here's F. Here's S. They could intersect along an arc, but if they intersect along an arc, then the, the boundary of the arc has to lie in the boundary of the surface. So think of how as now we can use a paper maybe. Of a surface of boundary intersecting the disk. Okay. But now so you can see that the paper intersects the disk along an arc. Okay, but the endpoints of the arc are the boundary of my other surface. Okay. So circles or arcs. There's any points. Okay, but now just looking at these guys. What is, by definition, so what is the boundary of F? F is the cyclic surface. So the boundary of F is our knot. Okay. But the boundary of F is the knot intersects intersects our knot in just two points by, by, by the definition. So the, uh, uh, 
uh, the boundary of our surface intersects this two sphere in only two points, just by definition of the kink side. So therefore, how many arcs could we have? Сколько будет пересечений у границы в двух точках? Значит, сколько будет дуг? Вот скажите. Just one arc. So only. So there's only one arc. So there's only. In fact, we have to have such what an arc because we know that the boundary in the six is two sphere and four. Okay. Okay. So here's the setup. If not with a circle, uh, surface of boundary in the six, its boundary in six is two sphere and two points. Okay. So it could intersect the surf, the two sphere. It has to intersect along one arc like this, or it could intersect along circles. Okay, so let me draw on this picture a case where we have circles. So let, I'm going to take this two, uh, soft circle. And I'm, I've got this two sphere around it, so let's just change the soft surface so that it. So it pokes through the two sphere. Okay, so I've got the soffit surface inside, and I just poked out. In fact, I've got a torus down here, so I just I just changed my surface. Okay, so my soft, this is still a soffit surface for the knot K. Okay, it's just got an extra, it's got a high genus. Okay, and it's the surface in a circle. Okay. So the so the goal of the proof, what we're going to do is, so if I just I choose some surface, a soffit surface, a mineral genus, our goal is if it has these kind of things happening, we want to get rid of these. So we're going to simplify the surface, we're going to cut it out. Okay? So, but hopefully this picture gives you an idea of why we can get circles or this one arc. So just poke out something silly. Okay, so in general, F and C intersect along circles or just one arc. intersections such other, if there are no other intersections between our two sphere and our surface, so if we just had this intersection, then we could take uh, this piece uh, inside the two sphere to be F1, 
and this piece outside the two sphere to be F2. So let's call it alpha. So if this surface intersected the surface along an arc just alpha, then we could we could define F. We could divide our whole cycle surface into one piece bound by the piece of the knot inside the two sphere unionless arc. We can call this piece F1 and this piece F2. So then if we can write F, uh, F is F1 union F2 along alpha. And F1 would bound the first knot, the knot inside the two sphere, and the second piece would bound the uh, would have boundary the second piece of the next one, where boundary F1 is K1 and the boundary F2 is K2. Is that so if we if I connect some knots, if we have a two sphere that intersects the surface in two points, then we can take the surface inside the two sphere and outside the two sphere. And those would each give us cyclic surfaces for two pieces of the knot. Is that okay? So let's put it up into one piece and one piece. Is that okay so far? Okay, so now these are cyclic surfaces for the two pieces. So now if F, so the genus of F now if we have two surfaces glued along an arc, what is the relationship between the genus of F? and the genus of these two surfaces. What, what does your gut tell you? If I have a surface here, say, so, and I have a surface here, and the joint along and up in the boundary, what have, what have the genus to it's just some of genus of Exactly. We'll, we'll put there if you don't know. So if we have G, uh, number of holes over here, number of holes over here, we go along the, and up in the boundary, then the genus is F. Okay, now, by, now the genus of F is by definition the genus of our connect sum. Because we chose it to be the, the minimal cycle surface. Okay. Now the genus of F1, now F1 is a cycle surface for K1. Okay. So what is the relationship between the genus of F1 and the genus of K1. So remember what genus of K1 means? It means the minimal genus of all its cyclic surfaces. So how can you draw the between this and K1? So remember that I, I wrote this over here a moment ago. That by definition, the genus of this knot, it's a genus of a cyclic surface or the knot. Remember what a cyclic surface is? A cyclic surface is an orientable surface bound by the knot. Okay. So we look at all those cyclic surfaces for the knot, and we choose the one with the minimal genus, the smallest genus. So for example, in this picture, here is one cyclic surface, and here is another cyclic surface. Okay. This one has a bigger genus. And we, de we define the genus of the knot to be the one with the smallest genus. Okay, so can you tell me what is the relationship between these two numbers? 
Какое неравенство? Что больше? G от F1 – это род какой-то поверхности, у которой границей является... А K1 – это минимальное. Что больше, число или самое маленькое? This is... Больше или равно? This is bigger than that. Or equal to... Okay. So this is bigger than equal to... And this is bigger than equal to... Genus of K1. So... This is bigger than equal to... So we've proved our equality. If so, assuming that we had such an F, then the genus of the connect sum is greater than equal to the genus of the sum. Okay. So what we need is to show that we have such a surface, a minimal surface for connect sum, such that it intersects the separating two sphere and just one up. So that's what we need to show. So your minimal subject surface means surface bound general situation. So, so the intersection of S and F if it is S before we we, we argue that the intersection between F and S are either we have our R On the two sphere F, uh, S, I'm just going to draw those intersections. Okay. Either we, we could have this arc, or we could have circles. Okay, so now let's look at what those circles could look like. We could have circles like this, this. Circles and arcs. Circles. What we'd like to do, our goal is to change the surface so that we have just one arc. This one arc. So here is an arc. So 
will change. And we will change the surgery. Surgery. The surgery allows us to, to, to make these kind of arguments, which is sometimes called uh, cut and paste arguments or, or animal circle arguments. Okay, so now, so, so, so let's do this. So we want to change our surface so that we no longer have these intersections, uh, these circle intersections. And just think of this as if we, if we poked out our torus before, we're going to chop off that, that extra piece. So now, so let me just say, this coordinate. Let's call it, sometimes it's called an innermost, innermost circle argument, and we'll see why that's in a, uh, the case at the moment. It's called innermost circle. What we do is we look at our intersections and we say let choose let C be a circle in the intersection, uh, which bounds a disk. Missing E. So in our picture, what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of each of these circle intersections one by one. Okay. And the first one we're going to choose is we're going to choose a circle that bounds a disk on the surf on the two sphere. Okay, we'll start with this guy, we'll get rid of him, and then we'll go to the next one, say this guy, and we'll get rid of him, okay, and then the next one will be this guy, and can you see that this yellow circle bounds a disc on the two sphere that misses the rest of the yellow? You see it bounds the outside of the two sphere, the rest of the two sphere. And so when I say missing F, in this case I must mean missing missing the yellow because the yellow is where F intersects the two sphere. Okay. And so and the reason it's called innermost circle argument is you see the circle we started off with here, it's called the innermost circle. We deal with that one, and then we go to the next innermost circle, and we keep doing this. So let C be a circle which bounds a disk on S missing F. And then what we're going to do is we're going to perform surgery on F along this surgery, uh, along this, uh, along this uh, circle. I'll, I'll, I'll write this down and I'll draw a picture so we can see what's happening. Then let C be the result. Uh, please uh, stop for oh. some explanations uh, for Timur in Russian. Значит, Тимур, что мы делаем? Мы, у нас сейчас есть uh, поверхность, границы которой является узел. Это вы понимаете? Uh, она может uh, пересекать сферу uh, по каким-то замкнутым кривым. Так вот, замкнутые кривые могут быть устроены достаточно хитро, то есть одна лежит внутри другой и так далее. Из всех таких Сначала выбираем ту, которая не содержит внутри себя вот эту вот отдельную дугу, но является самой внутренней. Поняли, да? И он объяснит, как ее убирать. 
Потом уберет следующий, потом следующий, потом следующий. И так вот будет убирать, убирать, убирать. В какой-то момент останутся только те, внутри которых содержится наша туга. А их надо разбирать, что называется, с внешней стороны. Но на самом деле это, по сути, то же самое, потому что с внешней это с внешней, но они же тоже ограничивают, понятно, да? Такую область, которая фактически является кругом. Просто люб, люб, любая, любая окружность делит сферу на две части, каждая из которых, по сути, круг. Ну вот, про это он говорит. So we're going to do this, we're going to perform surgery along this innermost circle. So the FCP, the result of surgery on air, along C. So if I come to a picture, to a picture. Here is our circle, C, see we have our sighted surface, it pokes through the two sphere, S, along our circle C, and what we're going to do is we're going to perform surgery of our surface along C. So what that means, by definition, means we cut out a neighborhood of the, an angular neighborhood of the, of the curve, and we glue in discs, and so we've removed the intersection with the two sphere. Okay, and so we get, in this picture I get this piece, and this piece. Do you see what happened? So remember that by definition of the surgery, it means we cut out that circle C. So therefore, if, the, if that curve was where the, the two surfaces were intersecting, we've now eliminated that intersection. Перестало пересекаться. То есть в этом месте мы разрезали и залечили. Но лучше всего представлять себе, как деревья отрезают ветки и замазывают. Okay, so now let's consider the it be the result of the, of the surgery. Now there are two cases. In my picture, in my picture, was C separating or non-separating? Separating. Okay, so now I claim that it's always going to be the case. So let's see why that... So... Claim. C must be separated. And why is that? Suppose it weren't separated. that the result of surgery is connected okay. so if we do the surgery and the result is connected FC is connected then the boundary of FC 
The boundary of FC, what is the boundary of FC, the result of the surgery? It's the same as the boundary of our surface F. Remember, the surgery doesn't change the boundary. Okay, but now what is the boundary of F? It was the boundary of our connect sum. Remember, F was the was the minimal genus surf, a minimal type of surface for the connect sum. Okay, so the boundary of F C must be the must be the connect sum of the two knots. Then this is boundary of F, which is the boundary of which is the connect sum of two knots. So therefore, if C must be a ciphered surface for our connect sum. Right? By definition, it's an orientable surface whose boundary is this knot. Okay? I.e. FC is a cyclic surface for K to so the genus of FC if this is a cyclic surface for the knot, then what is the relationship between this genus and the genus of the connect sum of K2 and K? What is the relationship between these two numbers? It's a subject surface for this knot, so by definition the genus of the knot has to be less than equal to the genus of the surface. But now, by definition of if the genus, genus of this connect sum is the genus of F. Right? F was our minimal ciphered surface for this. Okay, but what do we know about the genus of FC and the genus of F? Remember, when we do surgery along a, a non-separating curve, what happens to the genus? Cut a non-separating curve and sew in disc, what happens to the genus? Okay. It dropped by one, very good. But the genus, so the genus of FC is a genus of F minus one. Okay? So do you see this isn't possible? Okay. So if, if such a curve were non-separating, then doing surgery gets a new subject surface for the knot with a strict, strictly lower genus, which contradicts a choice of minimal subject surface. Okay? So this so which is contradictory. Okay, so by our choice of F, we must have our C must must have been separated. Okay. Thus, if C is separating, so if C, if C, the result of surgery has to be two pieces. Remember, we had two cases when we do surgery. Either it's connected and the genus drops by one, or we get two pieces, like in my picture here when we cut it off. So, C, e, C is two pieces. E, two. And what did we write before about the relationship? Uh, of the relation between the genus and the genome. So genus okay. 
If we do our surgery and we get two pieces, what was the relationship between the genus of our original surface and the, the genus of the two pieces? Если поверхность распадалась, что было с родом? Род был ранее сумме, помните? It was just the sun. Okay. Okay, so we've got the relationship. On the other hand, so remember the bound the, the boundary of the surface doesn't change under surgery. Okay. So now the boundary of F of the surface we start off with, it's the same as the boundary of doing the surgery. Okay. But now the boundary of the surface with sur uh, after doing the surgery is two pieces, this piece and this piece. Okay, so it's the union of the boundary of F1, F2. Is this okay what I've written here? The surface is two pieces. So the boundary of the whole, uh, the surface is the boundary of this piece and the boundary of this piece. Is that okay? Okay. Now, the boundary of F, what was the boundary of F? Is, uh, is, is, it was a knot, a K1, K2. So in particular, is the boundary, so this is equal to K1, K2. In particular, is the boundary of F connected? Connected. Is, this, is it not connected? It's a, it's a curve. Uzel, both sides. It's connected. Okay? So now here, this, so this, this boundary is connected, and we've just said that it's equal to the, the disjoint union of the boundary of this piece and the boundary of this piece. So what does that tell us about the boundary of F, and what, what does it tell us about this union? Узел не может попасть в две несвязанные компоненты. Он обязан содержаться в одной из них. И поскольку он точно знает, что у него есть точка в F1, значит он весь лежит в F1. А значит граница F2 это что? Пустое множество. Да, просто нет никакой границы. Это замкнутая поверхность. Скажите, что понимаете. So we can't, one of these pieces has to be empty, can't, must be, that means non-existent. Okay, so one of these must be empty, just, and, and therefore, we, so without, without uh, loss of generality, we could say that this, this piece has the boundary, and this piece has no boundary. So in our, in our picture, so let me draw the picture so, again. So. Remember in the picture I had before with our two sphere and our draw it one more time. Remember, so in this case we had our side surface and we poked it through the two sphere. Okay, and now what we just said is we said do surgery along this intersection. So you see that one piece has a not boundary and the other piece has no boundary. So, so this is So the boundary of this piece was our uh, boundary of our original guy, and this second guy didn't have any boundary. Okay, so that's what we're, that's what we're saying. So, so, okay, so
Francis hits the penalty. And just by the way, when we say without loss of generality, all I mean is we've got two pieces, F1 and F2. And when I say without loss of generality, this guy is the one that has the same boundary as our subtle surface, and this one is the one with the boundary. It just means that I can, the one and the two isn't, isn't important. I'm just choosing either one or two. Let's say it's one. Uh, okay. Alright, so now, so therefore, therefore, if one, if one has the same boundary as f, okay, so therefore f1 is a ciphered surface for our knot. Is that okay? So therefore f1 is a ciphered surface. surface if okay we looked at an intersection with the two sphere and then we did surgery to get our new surface f1 our new surface f1 so what happened was we we drop we we removed an intersection of our surface with the two sphere If one intersects the two sphere in one fewer circle, do you see? By, so by doing that surgery, we remove the intersection with the, the two sphere. So each time the surface pokes out, we do the surgery and we remove the intersection. Okay, so more of it. If one is one fewer. Количество компонент связанности и пересечения уменьшилось на единицу. genus of F1 what is the relationship between this number and this number 
This number has to be. Рот не бывает отрицательным. Поэтому какое неравенство получается? Рот F больше или равен?
from the existence existence of prime decomposition. So, so um, that Max or anyone else who went here, this is the goal of uh, the the areas proving the, the reason we wanted to prove the additivity of genus was that uh, as a corollary, where the theorem which said that uh, uh, any any non-trivial Decomposed 